So I said that in order to be effective as an evangelizer, we must come into the lives of people. Now I would uh, add further, not only to life situations, but also cultural situations. Today the world is multicultural, it's becoming more and more multicultural, not only in India where we had already an experience of living on, among people of various cultures, but practically all over the world. And this is going to be further accentuated and uh, uh, co-living, living together is going to be more difficult unless we learn how to accommodate ourselves to other people. But it is in this context that we need to evangelize, give a, convey a good message. And therefore, we will succeed to transfer a message, convey a, a message that is worthwhile only if we know how to communicate across cultures. Even uh, development officers living in another part of the country, another part of the world, will need to learn the cultural uh, situations and then rules and norms and customs, traditional uh, there in order to be effective as a district collector, uh, police officer, person who hold a, holds a rank in IAS officer in another part of the country. All the more, someone who has to come intimate to other persons in the religious field. A priest is uh, uh, very intimate to uh, the persons with whom he is associating so any evangelizer will have to come closer to the lives, attitudes, value systems of a person to whom he wants to convey a message, he or she wants to convey a message. Now, when you say culture, very often people understand the dances and songs, decorations and, and things of that kind. These are also expressions of culture and these products of civilization. But there are other things much deeper, for example, attitudes. Relation, styles of relationship, norms by which you guide your personal life, relationship within the family, with the seniors, juniors, companions, various contexts. Words used and their connotations, very different from one culture to another. And uh, the tone of voice, gestures, some gesture that looks harmless to one may look threatening to another person. And uh, Communities that are used to be uh, to be told things clearly among themselves are communicated with clarity and emphasis will be being threatened um, if someone is remaining vague or they do not understand the message that you want to convey. And vice versa, someone who is used to living in a context where the message is conveyed in a gentle way, respectful way, use, use, usually using euphemisms, very for polite and respectful in a way language uh, when they hear a message given to them with the emphasis and uh, double strength they may be threatened and that regarding ordinary day-to-day -day conduct all the more regarding a message that is serious that is meant to affect your personal life transform societies uh, they have to be offered in a way that will be intelligible to other people and uh, so uh, we look at Jesus as an example. Jesus, when he spoke to the Syrophoenician woman, she belonged to another culture than his own. He knew how to uh, inspire confidence in her. He spoke to the Roman officer. And to him also he spoke in such a way that he would respect Jesus. He spoke to the Samaritan woman. Samaritans are different from the Jews and they themselves have certain prejudices but he knew how to go across that, that those prejudices and speak to her in a way that would be meaningful to her. He, he spoke to Pilate amazingly in that context in which he was standing as a prisoner. He spoke to him with great confidence, almost like an equal and not as though he is arguing but proposing certain concepts that Pilate ought to think when he said for example uh, I have come to bear witness to the, to the truth, which made Pilate think. He asked himself, what is the truth? It is true, he did not follow up the question, but that's how a person coming from another culture ought to do when he is sharing the gospel. And in this, we often make mistakes. When we move across one culture to another, we, make, we give the wrong symbols, we make the wrong use of words, we take the wrong attitudes, 
Sometimes in the defense of what is good and proper and right, we take a uh, um, mode of approach that is not proper and right and it's not uh, going to be productive. So these mistakes are very common and that's one of the reasons why either our work is ineffective or counterproductive or extremely, it may even cause, lead to violence, lead to tensions and uh, even a certain amount of self-criticism is good in the context of violence taking place against our personnel in different parts of the country. We should not put all the blame on the other side. It is that we are not understood or we act or relate in a way that is not in fitting with the culture of the situation. If we are like an aggressive force, an alien force that is trying to impose certain things on others. By this I do not mean to say that you need not express you with conviction what you believe, but you also do it with respect as Jesus did in various contexts. So respect for culture, attention to the cultural norms and traditions of people, paying uh, attention also to the phrases and vocabulary that is traditional in a new culture is extremely important to make our message meaningful and uh, uh, relevant and attractive. Attractive in the means uh, people, to open people's hearts to a particular message. They must understand it is meaningful to them, that it is relevant to their life. It is going to bring joy into, into their hearts. It is bring, bring a happy relationship within their society. And uh, probably what I have said is too brief uh, for a concept that, has, that is as profound as culture. But uh, at least I would like to highlight it on this occasion that attention to culture, respect for culture, and local traditions, vocabularies that are emerged within culture is extremely important to communicate effectively the message of Jesus.